investing. Some of the first things that come to mind are day trading, potentially losing all your money and people screaming at each other. You might see online gurus trying to sell you a thousand dollar course on how to invest in cryptocurrency and forex while standing in front of a Lamborghini or a private jet. Despite what you may have heard, investing doesn't have to be complicated, overwhelming or time consuming. Anyone can get started with just a few dollars a week and once you understand the basics, you could make millions of dollars in your lifetime. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to start investing as a New Zealander, how the stock market works, what companies you should be investing in, and a complete step-by-step -step guide of setting up your own brokerage account and making your first investment. So the very first thing you're going to need is a brokerage platform where you can start buying and selling shares. In New Zealand, there's a few different options. You can invest with major banks like ASB. There's also Hatch and Sharesies, Stake, Tiger Brokers. There's quite a few options available. Personally, for me, I do the majority of my investing through Hatch. It's a local Kiwi platform that gives you access to the American market. The reason that I like it is because it offers low fees, has an easy to follow platform, and it helps you get your taxes sorted as well. So I've been using it since 2020, and at one point I had over $30,000 on the platform, so I definitely trust it with my money. If you wanna try out Hatch for yourself, then make sure to sign up using my affiliate link down below in the description box, which will give you a free $20 when you first make an account. So in terms of what you need to make your brokerage account, just a few basic pieces of info. So things like your email address, phone number, date of birth, then you'll also be asked for some ID. So either your driver's license or your New Zealand passport. And then it'll also ask you for your IID number. And this is standard between all the different brokers that you have. Essentially, if you sign up to one, you know the exact process to sign up to another. So with Hatch, if we just type that into Google, click on create an account, it's going to guide us through entering all the info we just covered and then it takes about two to three business days for everything to get verified and then you're ready to start investing with the platform. So now that you've got a brokerage account, you wanna know what should you be investing in. So basically when it comes to the stock market, there's two main options that you have. There's ETFs, which are exchange traded funds. Some of you might already be familiar with these and then there's individual stocks as well. So we'll go through the pros and cons of each of these different investment options so you can figure out which one is gonna be the best for you and the goals that you have. So firstly, there's ETFs, and this is essentially just a collection of various different companies all clumped together into one investment, or it's often referred to as a basket of stocks. So basically, an ETF will track things like a country's stock market, commodities like gold or silver, or certain sectors in the market like healthcare or property. Some of the most common ETFs that you can get are ones that track a country's stock market. So in New Zealand, you got the NZX50, which tracks the biggest 50 companies in New Zealand. In Australia, there's the ASX 200. And then the biggest and most notable one is the S&P 500. And that's just a collection of the 500 biggest publicly traded companies in America. So it's got all really big names like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Tesla, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Nvidia. So all the big major companies that you'll probably know of are all locked up in that specific index. So normally what happens is that big financial companies like iShares and Vanguard pay for a lot license to create an ETF that will track a country's stock market. So the same way that me and you might pay for a subscription to use one of Adobe's products like Photoshop, these big financial companies will pay a subscription fee to be allowed to make an ETF that will track a specific index. So with the S&P 500, you can't directly put your money into it if you're a retail investor like you and me. So companies like Vanguard and BlackRock will make ETF products that will allow retail investors like us to put our money into these indexes and that's where the ETFs come from. So to make this a bit more clear, if you put the stock graph of the S&P 500 index across the past five years next to an S&P 500 ETF like VOO, you can see that their performances are exactly the same because the ETF will buy and sell into all the same companies that the S&P 500 does. So if you want to get exposure to a good diversified investment, an ETF is the best option. So on average, the S&P 500 will give you a return of about 8 to 10 now, this is all based on old historical data, and I know that past performance doesn't indicate future performance, but this has been the standard return for over 100 years, so you can't really get many other investments that have such a strong track record. So if we be a bit more conservative and say that the S&P 500 is going to go up 8% every year, that means every nine years your money is going to double in value. So this is really important because if we look at, say, a savings account, that might give you a 2% return every year, that means it would take 
take 36 years for you to double your money. So it's substantially faster when you're investing in the stock market. As a practical example to show the returns that you can make, if you invested $5,000 per year for 40 years and started when you were 25 and you finished when you were 65, you would have over $1.29 million at the end of it. And if you just held on to the money in cash and hid it under your mattress, then you'd only have $200,000. So over $1 million difference between investing and not investing your money. So of course there are limitations, 40 years is quite a long time to be investing, but it does show you the power of the stock market. And the biggest investor in the world, Warren Buffett, who has a net worth of over $100 billion, says that dollar cost averaging or putting a consistent amount of money into the S&P 500 is the best investment that anyone can make. And it's what he recommends the vast majority of people to do with their money. He doesn't advise people to pick out individual stocks and try and do their own research on companies. He says just constantly putting in a set amount of money per week or per month into the S&P 500 is going to give you the best returns in the long run. So moving on to individual companies, this is when you spend your own personal time researching stocks, looking into the finer details of a company like its management team, looking at financial reports, trying to get a really good gauge of how the company works and if it's going to be worthwhile for you to put your money with them as well. So when you hear people say become an overnight millionaire from putting their money into a stock like Nvidia or Tesla, something that's had a really great run in the past few years, this is typically where it happens. It's with an individual company. No one becomes an overnight millionaire or makes a thousand percent return in a year from putting their money into a diversified ETF like VOO. It comes from individual stocks and there's a few different types of individual stocks as well. So firstly, there's the growth stocks that everyone has probably heard of like Tesla and Nvidia, ones that will do really, really well for a few years and then they'll sort of start to slow down a little bit, but often still get quite good consistent growth. So normally big tech companies, potentially ones that are a bit newer, can fall into this sort of high growth category. And you often hear people say that these kind of stocks are overpriced or that they're not really as valuable as everyone says they are. But realistically, at the end of the day, if lots of people buy into a particular stock, there's lots of hype around it and lots of interest and people are putting their money into that investment, the price of it is going to go up. So if you want to ride the train and be a part of that, you can do it as well, but it's not a very consistent and long-term strategy. So again, you have to keep in mind the risk versus reward of doing this. So if you're not that interested in growth stocks or ones that potentially can make you lots of money, but have a really big drop as well, then there's also blue chip companies, ones that are sort of big established leaders in their field. So think of brands like Coca-Cola, Apple, Disney, McDonald's. So all of these big branded companies that have stood the test of time and been around for decades. So now that you know what the different investing options are, there's some key things you have to know about the stock market, which are often common misconceptions that people have. So the first one is that recessions are completely normal. So basically a recession with the stock market is referred to any drop in total stock market price of 30% or more. And this will happen on average about every eight years. So from 1945 to 2020, there's been over 13 quite major recessions. And on average, the stock market will come down about 30% every time one of these happens. And there's also corrections, and that's just a euphemism of saying that everyone's lost a lot of money. So a correction just means the stock market has come down about 10%. And these are completely normal. If you're gonna invest, there's gonna be recessions while you're investing in the market, and you can likely have a drop of up to 30%. So one of the most recent ones that a lot of people will have known about is during the pandemic. So when the coronavirus had the world in lockdown, the S&P 500 dropped about 35%. But only a few months later, it quickly rebounded, went up to some of the biggest and highest numbers that it had ever seen. So there's always recessions, they're quite normal, and normally they'll last a max of about 10 months. And from 1945 to 2020, if you hold your investment for at least 10 months, you're going to be back in the green and not have lost money. So this data that I'm showing here was made by Market Sentiment. I'll leave his articles linked below in the description, but it just shows you how normal recessions are, and they're not something to be afraid of. So if you're going to invest, they're going to be part and parcel of your investing journey. You're never going to find a stock that's going to go up in a perfectly straight line. There's always going to be ups and downs along the way, and that's just part of it. The other important thing is that most people can't beat the market. Even hedge fund managers that are paid millions of dollars to look after people's money and pick out what companies are going to be bought and sold, 90% of the time can't beat the standard stock market return of the S&P 500. Hence why Warren Buffett tells most people to just invest into the S&P 500. 
you're most of the time better off just participating in the market, gaining the standard stock market return and having your money gradually grow and compound over time. If a hedge fund manager that's paid millions of dollars and potentially has decades of experience can't beat the market, it's going to be hard for the standard retail investor like you and me to do it. So now we've gone through all those things, we're going to jump over to Hatch and then we'll take a look at what the actual process is of buying some shares of a company. So we've been talking about VOO this whole video, so I'm just going to buy shares of that so you can kind of see what the whole process looks like. So this is what the home screen looks like. So there's a few different things you can take a look at. There's the portfolio, you can browse through companies, look at your transaction history, just a few basic things, but I won't spend a whole lot of time reviewing the platform. I have a separate review video, so we'll just jump into the buying process of this ETF. So if we click on the search icon, you just type in the ticker symbol for VOO, which we'll put that in here, and then we'll click on the bottom one. Here we go, S&P 500 Vanguard ETF, click on that. And then it's going to show you a bit of statistical information about the business. So the one day return, three months, one year, and you can kind of get a good idea of how the stock's been performing. So this year it's already done quite well, up 22%. So almost well, over double what the standard return is. And then it shows you the dividend yield, 1.37%, a bit of a blurb about the company and kind of what the ETF is about. And you just click on buy and then it's going to give you those different buying options so there's auto investment that we had at the bottom last time but we're just going to go with market buy order so you select the amount that you want to invest in so at the moment i have zero dollars in my hatch account but say if you want to invest a hundred dollars type that in it's going to have the fee so it's three us dollars per investment with hatch and you just click on review market buy order and then the shares of that stock will show up in your account and that's all you have to do so once you've done that, then your shares are going to be on their way into your account. It takes about two to three business days, and then you have bought your very first shares of a company, and that's all you have to do. So the last thing to keep in mind with investing in New Zealand is your taxes. Do you have any tax obligations? Are you obligated to fill out any special forms to help get your taxes sorted? So there's a few criteria where you have to do some paperwork of your own. So with things like if you get a dividend payment of 200 New Zealand dollars or more from an overseas company, or if you have invested a total of $50,000 or more in an overseas business. So say if you're investing in companies like Apple and Microsoft, ones that are outside of New Zealand but there's a few other things to keep in mind like what if you're quickly buying and selling between different companies and a few other criteria where you might have to do some paperwork of your own to make sure you're meeting all your tax obligations if you want to see a complete guide on how to get your taxes sorted as a Kiwi investor then make sure to check out this video on screen that will show you exactly how to do that